Okay. You better be recording this is all I got to say. <laughs> I hope somebody was recording it because I really, really, really did it so that you would record it. And if you make me do it again, I'm going to get very angry. <laughs> so everybody, please record it. All right. Listen carefully. What the Buddha was doing was telling these guys, these two Brahmins, they were fighting, not really fighting, but one said, you're a Brahmin, the best person in the world, the best questioner, the best, the best uh, seeker. You are the best seeker if you are out there um, asking questions and everything, but you, you are only the excellent Brahmin if you're born to a Brahmin family. So that was not it. <laughs> and then the second thing the other guy said was, no, it isn't, it isn't that you have to be born to the mother that was a good Brahmin and the father that was a good Brahmin. Probably helps, but uh, that wasn't what it was. What it basically was about was that you do good things and that you're the one that does all the proper ceremonies and celebrations and traditions and stuff at the temple. Well, now it turned out to be, if you go to the temple, if you're this, 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 then, then you can be Brahmin. Yeah, but then they decided this couldn't be it either. You know, this is not it. And so they went to the Buddha because he was around and they decided these other Brahmins, they told him he's here, go, 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 go ask him. Probably Todia, the young one, probably said, you know, he's here, he's here. Go ask him. He'll tell you. <clears throat> so how does the how does the Buddha decide to handle this? It was wonderful. I wish my children are all in their 50s now, but I wish that my children were really, really young and I could let them listen to what he did because he went back to kindergarten <laughs> with them and he started to explain everything that lives on the earth and how it's put together. So, I mean, this was so perfect. Because you kind of cut out, okay. And when you look at the picture, it's like, oh, it's got these 63 little verses that are very irritating. You think, oh, 63 verses, well, wow. oof. But it's, the seti is something like, uh, let's see, 63 verses, right? Two, two line verses, that's all. And what he's doing is he starts in kindergarten, he says, well, he says, what your idea is not correct. That's not what makes the person the Brahmin that makes them important, that makes them the big shot. That's not it. And then he starts by the, taking his turn to explain, I will teach you the order, he says, very simple, as they really are for living things on the planet. He's gonna tell you. The generic divisions of living things. For many are the kinds of birth that can occur for living things to happen. So where does he take you? Oh, it's wonderful. He takes you to the grass and the trees, the moths and the butterflies, the quadrupeds, the little bugs, to the, belt, the little things that crawl on the ground with their bellies, they don't have feet. He takes you to the walking fish and the fish, the fish that, yeah, I don't know if you've ever watched it, but in the springtime when things thaw and the water comes into the pasture, maybe an inch or two deep near a stream, there are certain fish that have been hibernating in the mud through the winter and when it gets to a certain temperature and the water is deep enough, the fish hatch. So these, he talks about them. And then the birds, they come and they fly and the births are different. Each one, each kind of birth that has a distinctive mark, a distinctive way of happening, but each one has a purpose like that to be born into the earth. But then he starts about men. Then, he's, then he goes to the real problem here, or not problem, the issue. He, he starts to talk about the differences in men and human beings. And frankly, 
It goes through everything you can possibly imagine uh, in discussing how a human being is put together. And when you get to the end of this wonderful thing, you find out there is no difference between men at all. And so here comes the stupidity of the world leaders who have to sit for days and decide whether they're gonna stop a genocide. They have to think whether they should do anything other than stand at the United Nations and brag about who should vote for them next to elect them. I really liked that Al Jazeera did that. She spent like about five or 10 minutes talking about what was really happening at the United Nations. Nothing significant. When you're murdering thousands of people in a genocide, it's, isn't it time to have coffee? Shouldn't you just all sit down and have tea? No, sorry. So this is where women come in. You know, we're good natured, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> we're good natured. <laughs> we try. We do the best we can. But at some point, somewhere, human beings will have to make a decision. And one group, and really I think it's women is most logical. If we really got there, we would just stop having babies. Just forget it. No more, end, over, done. You see how powerful we are? Can you see it? How can we miss it? We push, take back the night. We do that. We push for all different kinds of gender. I don't care who you decide you are. I think you should leave little children alone to figure it out. But I really don't care who you are. I don't care what you eat. The Buddha doesn't care what you eat. He doesn't care if you're a vegetarian or you eat meat. If you don't eat the animals, they'll eat themselves and have a big fight and get sick and die. You never thought about that, did you? <laughs> but we don't have to eat all of them. You know, you can share, you can balance. We, we human beings, we have this wonderful sense of body, feeling, perception, thoughts, and consciousness. Perception, perceiving, naming, quantitatively analyzing, figuring out what is just and unjust to do. What is just? What is unjust? Does it feel good to you? Does it make you feel happier? Does it make you feel lighter? Do you get kinder? Does it make May feel that way if I'm that way towards her? Maybe she'll send me the chamomile tea. <laughs> I'm still trying to find chamomile tea in Poland. <laughs> um, anyway, the whole point is, I don't wanna be quiet about this. I could sit here and fold my arms and sit on a pillow three feet ahead of you, higher than you are, look down on you, say that I'm the holy one and you should do this. You don't need this from me. You don't need it from anybody. You know, in your heart, this could have been a 10 minute talk about stopping, just stopping. We should all be smiling because why? We should all be smiling right now because we know we have the power. You know that old song? I've got the power, I've got the power to move. I've got the power to move the music through. I got the power. You have the power. We don't have to go back to the 1950s, the 1960s to tell you that the music said you had the power. You have the power. You don't have to stand alone on the corner fighting at the world outside. You don't have to be afraid and wonder if you, maybe you should come inside and hide. You don't have to hide. You just have to say, no, it's kind of like when they started that thing about drugs. No, you say no. With this, you say no. And if anybody pops off a bomb, <laughs> you don't buy anything in their country. You, you Look, 
You can fuss at me all you want. They might shoot me. I'm a woman. They shoot your men. They shoot your children. They're killing your grandchildren. And they killed your parents. Are you not willing to lay down your life to say no? What's wrong with this world? We need to ask ourselves. This is a serious thing. This is not a sweet talk thing. I have to be very quiet. When I say this, I should be very quiet. I could get Ninny out. He could come and talk to you. He's just a puppet, but <laughs> he has a very small voice, but he says it very loud. And all he really tells me when I put him down beside me at night, tell them to stop. Let it sink in. Close your eyes and look in the dark. Stop. What is the transference? What is the harmony of it? What is the frequency of it? Love. What is the power of metta? Love. What is the power of compassion? Very similar, very high rate. Metta's 550, 560 on the frequency. The Karuna comes in in the 300s. The joy comes back up, pushes up inside. You see, it's you. You're the frequency. You're the battery. You're the one that's running the earth. And you can say, stop. So what do you think we should do? <laughs> it's a loaded question. Stop. That's what we need to tell our neighbors. It's what we need to tell ourselves. It's what we need to spread around. Don't be afraid. Uh-uh. It needs to just stop. So what happened here was he, the Buddha was really just explaining to them. The same way he was talking, in a way, it, it reminds me of the vegetarian and the meat eating thing. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the doctor says to him, don't you think we should all eat, stop eating meat? We should all be vegetarians. And he finally says, stop, I don't want to talk about this anymore. And the doctor says, why? He says, because I don't care what you put in your mouth. I don't care what you chew up and put in your stomach. Because only thing that makes war happen is what comes out of your mouth. And what you do with that, pushing each other around, that's what makes things happen the wrong way. And that's what he said. We have to be balanced. We have to be patient with each other. We have to be loving. We have to discover the frequency of the human being again. We have to look at, look, go, go see Jeremy's work in, in, in Australia. It's all over the internet. He figured out what's wrong with human beings. Now, I don't think he has the delivery system to get the message to you, <laughs> but we have the delivery system and I wish we could get together on this because all you have to do is make a decision when something's in your face to stop and forgive it right there and not go another step towards the tenseness and the tightness that's in your head to react. You can do this because you can laugh, that's why. So where did I go to discover that I could laugh at that? Well, I got cancer <laughs> and then I'm sitting there thinking what this cancer has done to me the first three weeks or three months of the cancer. And it made me so defenseless. It made me feel uh, everything had just happened to me. I became a victim of what I was teaching you, but because I was teaching you for so many years, nothing is happening to me. Everything is happening from me, meaning I probably have enough power to change 
dynamically inside even, if I see this healing enough, the enough of the light comes out, whether it will work or not, I don't know. But I can turn the light on inside me is the energy that you see me with now. You didn't see me like this three, four weeks ago. I know you guys, you did not see me this way. But something happened when I went in the hospital for five days. I went in the hospital because of a bacterial infection from the treatment. Whether it was bad or not, it took five days to come through. And when I came out the other side, I realized that I had changed. But how did I change? Because I made a decision. And the decision was not hopeless, it was hopeful. And the decision was why go in that direction? Nothing is stagnant, nothing is stuck. You can feel the movement if you close your eyes and you relax. In, I'm gonna encourage you to do something that's a little different. When you're sitting, before you start your practice and you are doing your six Rs, I want you to sit for about five minutes just breathing. Just breathing means relaxing your whole body and simply just breathing. It means understanding that you're breathing, not observing it or watching it closely. I just want you to feel how fast the vibration can leave your body, that's all. And then when anything, when it, you feel it, it's empty, it's an empty spot, it, it'll leave when you're just breathing, it will just leave. And when it stops, you will be able to feel the rise in the tightness earlier when it comes up, try it. And when you feel that tightness, just barely start. That's when you let go, relax, smile, and come back. And you practice, never mind that tightness. You practice, never mind that. Just let it go, relax, smile, come back. Just that quickly. Never mind that. Just let go, relax, smile, come back. It's a game. We're, our little book is, I think, almost finished, isn't it, Bonte? Our little book. Little book, yes. Uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, I think uh, the layout is over. And then we will kind of uh, go into the printing. So, and the second book uh, we have uh, in the uh, stages uh, of layout. So, we are, uh, uh, the Nevermind book, uh, we will have some colorful uh, illustrations also on, on that. And uh, we will, uh, uh, the, it is coming out good. Uh, it, it is looking good. And That's great. Uh, a cover. So it will be by 28th of uh, October that another mind book, book will be there. The, yeah. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then I think, I think yesterday we found something. I've been digging. I've been spending at least an hour or two <laughs> each day digging through 15 or 16 years of writings that have never been published, you know, that I have. And so I find things that I don't expect. And one thing I found that was interesting was that there's a complete book that I finished in 2013. <laughs> And this was never published because my relationship with my teacher was to travel and teach Dhamma and I was his attendant. So whenever I got to a place where I may have been involved in something, we, we just kept moving and we didn't stop. And also in those days, you know, in back in 2010 to, 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 to you know, to recent, more recent time, we had nobody who was really supporting us properly uh, with anything other than donations during the time that we were doing uh, retreats and it would be enough money to get from one place to another to another all the way around the world a couple times. But, but the thing is, we didn't have people volunteering the way we do now to help us with these books and get them published. And we didn't have anybody to collect the music that we've, we've written music for children. And, and we've done other things that we, and we're there's enough material in this booklet 
to put a biography together of, of the teaching. It was my version of a guidebook for teaching meditation, but it was never published from 2013. So we, I gave this to Monty and I said, you know, give this to the, to the, the one person is a, a, owns a Buddhist bookstore, I think, and wants to publish another book and said, take this one and see what, see what happens with it, because it tells you absolutely positively everything, <laughs> like leave the window open so it's cool enough, and wear the right clothes and all temperature, just, it just tells you a lot of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what we're playing with that one, too, and I see how fast we can do that. So things are really happening. And I think that everybody can get this little tiny message out and share it with women is what I would like to see it happen more than anything in the whole world is what I would like to see women wake up and find out how powerful they actually are. If you are the mother and you have the Mata voice, that the Mata voice is the voice where the five children are playing outside. They don't want to come in for dinner. And the mother gets on the porch and says, Mata says it's time for dinner. <laughs> and everybody comes in immediately to get food, get fed, you see. So do you have the Mata voice? <laughs> we can have a little advertisement. Put your Mata voice on and, and start to get serious with this world and help people to set themselves free and protect this earth. And it'll help you clean up the earth. You will see if you dip into your personal feminine power. And it's male and female. It's yin and yang. You have two parts. I do, you do, everybody does. Two parts in balance, how powerful that can be to change things. Play with it, the harmonics. So anybody have anything to say about this? Do you think it'll work? I want to know. It all depends, you know, Sister Kevana, because uh, what happens is that uh, the world over there, it works on its own clock and uh, we work on our own clock. So as uh, the Buddha says that you can change yourself and uh, you should be the change you want to see in the world. So I would say that uh, we all you, should kind of can, uh, strive to... Yeah be a better person if you, if, but if you, if you, you you're you're you, what you just said though you missed the connection your clockworks are connected to my clockworks you so just said that everybody if you, if should you be listen to yourself person. you have to listen very deeply to what monty just said because i don't know if he heard himself say it but he's actually his clockworks clockworks are connected to my clockworks and my clockworks effect the clock works next door to me. And if I affect my children who affect the children next door, who affect their parents, who affect the mayor, we change the community. Well, let's not stop with the community. <laughs> you see? And, 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 and let's not get angry at these men who want to you know, be famous for, for war or this or that or the other. Let them be famous for being jerks, for being stupid, for being dumb looking. Let them figure out how stupid they look to women in the world. These men have got to look really stupid. I don't mean the soldiers. I, I want to make this clear. They are the puppets of this whole game. I mean leadership. It's just one big party of spouting yourself off. I don't care what you say to me when you're dealing with my world. You know, so will it work? You, you, it's up to you. Can you do that? Yeah. And uh, we had one other subject like uh, about pray, prayer and uh, metta, how it affects the world. Ah, okay. Let's go into that for a minute. I think where I would go with prayer with you is back to a remarkable, a remarkable experience that I had. In September of 2021, I was asked, I was in India and I was called and asked to go to a Catholic convent. 
to me to go to a Catholic convent and teach people meditation. Now, it's an interesting thing because I was looking for the last number of months in 2021 at the whole approach of Buddhism to humanism and humanistically saying that Buddhism is not so much a religion as it is, um, it's a, it's a understanding your mind. It's a study of mind and um, how everything actually operates in the whole world and how everything, how we, we can have an effect on our world. Prayer, this, when you talk about prayer and you talk about frequency and harmony and connection with the earth, and the powerfulness of how prayer works. One thing, you have to go back, and I, I, I wrote several things down, but one thing was miracles only happen for people who believe in them. That's one of the statements I found. You know, miracles only happen for people who believe. So what is belief? The power of belief is hardly measurable. This is a problem for us if we're scientific. But we have to back up in our say, how are we going to live our life? Are we going to force ourselves to only live based on science is a very dry, sort of dead <laughs> kind of thing. I look at paintings where people have, uh, look, you know, done paintings, uh, techno paintings and stuff don't even touch me and to go to look at these paintings without the heart and the vibrance and the energy of a human being in the painting. How can you do that in techno painting? There's lots of things in this world. So we're looking at how are we gonna look at prayer when we say, it, what is the power of prayer? What does it actually do? Well, things happen when we empty our brain. This is what I can tell you in, in Buddhism. What we're doing is experimenting with the, power, the powerfulness of your brain, if there's no tension and tightness pulling or pushing on it at all. And we can let go, where does that come from? The tension and the tightness comes from thoughts of the past and sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, despair about what happened before, or worry and tenseness and upset about what could happen in front of you. So you have these two sides, two sides, okay? And they're pushing and pulling you constantly. So what happens if we let go of those? Again, we're appealing to the brilliance of the human being. That's different, a great deal different. It's beyond the horse. Horses are very smart, <laughs> but it's beyond the horse. You know, it's. Human beings have this ability to analyze. And because we have this ability to analyze, pick, 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 pick. We want to do that instead of taking action. Now, one guy, he was very interesting. He his son involved in the Huberman, Dr. Huberman, H-U-B-B-E-R-M-A-N. Huberman is a doctor in research for neuroplasticity. He is connected with the Stanford University Hospital in the United States, has one of the largest um, credible report systems that are operating online, keeping track of how people are changing their lives by changing their mind. So here we are back to change your mind, to change the world. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So, but in this day and time, we have a problem. I say this day and time because maybe back in the 1800s and, and 1700s, we still had a great deal of belief. We could sense that if a person thought about something, they could make something happen. We still believed in the power of words. We still believed in the idea of I could put a curse on you. If I put a, put a hex on you, I could do that. And something could happen. We still had these beliefs. And, and this is just my opinion. We shouldn't just throw them all out the window because we can't measure them. And we're stuck in science now. We want to measure absolutely everything, you know? But 
doesn't pay off. It doesn't. So do you, do you have faith in it? What's the difference with a child when you put faith in them and say, you can win this, you can go out there and you can really do it. And you talk to your child and you believe he can make the goal and he can do it. He goes out there believing in your energy and what you gave him that moment to go out there and make that goal in soccer. And he does it. And you're just thrilled. And you feel all of this surge of energy and happiness and pride comes up and you're so happy, you know, because he succeeded. And there's this connection, this living connection. I don't think we should struggle hard to get rid of this uh, human connection because we really, really need this human connection right now. You see? We need to believe that you can feel it when I say stop and I say no more. I mean it. We need you to feel it in your gut and feel it in your heart and feel it in your throat that you know all this stuff of garbage about war missiles and all the rest of this stuff that we got rid of in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the peace movement and the SALT Treaty and we tried to stop it. Listen. You guys, you don't even know what it's like to be afraid with children. When my children were growing up, they looked at the news at night on the TV. This is in the 70s and 80s. And every night, Russia would talk about having 28,000 warheads. And the United States would sit there and crumble and say, we only have 21,000. And the Japanese, they got involved and they started to push for the SALT Treaty and they had a lot to do with it. SALT Treaty was a treaty that said, we have to stop, we can't make any more, we have to take the missiles apart, we have to get rid of the stuff. Now, we had a problem. We still got a problem because our boys were playing with their toys. And when they invented these things, they had to invent something that didn't exist on the earth. And the material you make a bomb with does, isn't natural and shouldn't be here. We have a problem. We have a problem to store it. We have a problem to keep it from being used again. We got a big problem here. But we still have a brain. We, I still believe in hope. I may get loud and gruff here, but I believe in hope. We have enough sense to back up and remember. You're talking about Russia has the biggest nuclear arms, 6,000 heads, warheads. What is 6,000? Yeah, but here's the problem. Explode six, not 6,000, six. And you got a big, big, big billion, millions and millions of people that are going to die. That's what you got a problem here for. This is no game. This is not part cheesy. And this game is not like some board game you play. This game is dead serious. So when I'm talking to you about women need to say stop, they need to say stop. Everything. Because you guys got to back up, come back out of your kindergarten class stop talking about things that are impossible to actually work with you know what's sad i used to talk about missiles i used to go to schools and talk to parents about how they should talk to their kids about missiles and one woman she was a cook she was just a simple cook in the school she came out after we were finished talking she brought out a cart and it had tea on it for everybody and cookies, piles of cookies. And the cookies were in piles representing how much tax money that we were spending on building missiles. <laughs> you know, but she looked at those piles. She, she, she was kind of laughing. I said, you know, Alice, why are you laughing? And she says, because of this whole discussion. And I said, well, what's so funny about it? She says, you see, the pile that you're spending money on the missile. She said, why would anybody spend money on something when they can't use the missile and they can't ride the missile 
and they can't eat the missile. <laughs> and she was so, it was so simple for her. Why don't we just stop playing around with missiles and we start getting paint and music and sports back in our schools again? Why are we giving all this tax money to build something that we cannot even use? We cannot even use it. Do you see what I mean when I say that this is kindergarten level stuff, mom? Wake up, mom. This is not even first grade. Kindergartens, when you send the child to school just to learn their individual space and they should respect their personal space and somebody else's personal space. That's what we used to say about kindergarten. In first grade, you start learning ones, twos, frogs, flowers, you know, things like that. <laughs> Little tiny math problems. You know, you start singing songs and stuff. But in kindergarten, we march them around and we used to just want them to be able to respect their space and be nice to each other, not throw things at kids, each other and be playing together. It was a simple thing. And here we are, 2022. We had the power in 2000 to feed everybody on the earth, to house them, to clothe them, to give them schools. Every country in the world could have had everything they needed, but they didn't. I came out of high school, graduated in 1967. I believed but by year 2000, my classmates, we believed all of this stuff about war would be gone. It would be stupid because we were inventing things fast enough. Science fiction type stuff was coming into reality to actually have uh, you know, gardens to feed people in, in dry areas to turn deserts into green. All these things were possible. It's all possible. But mom, the children, they're stuck in the school. They're stuck inside the kindergarten class and they can't seem to get out of the building. And what's pushing them is mana, the money. What's pushing them is the ability to have an industry that can make more money than computers, more money than anything else. But here's the funny part. The guys that are making all the money, maybe they're in first grade, but they still don't get something. When they die, they can't take it with them. It's all a joke. It's all a big joke. It's a competitive male joke. That's all it is. They can compete with all the war machines, the inventions and everything they do. But you know what? In the end, there's no more green fields. No more water when the lakes dry up. When the oceans die, it's done. When the water's gone, my, father, my uncle died. He said the very last words. He says, tell Sister Kama that the end of the human race comes down to one thing, pure water. That's all. And then he died. He took two breaths and he died. It all comes down to clean water. That's all. Yeah, so say no. That's it. I'm gonna cut this off. Anybody wanna say something? Come on, yell back at me. Come on, <laughs> tell me I'm insane. I'm absolutely nuts. But prayer, the power of prayer is the power of people sitting together and joining their frequencies and their harmonies together in a circle. The Catholics do it, they call it a novena. When you're sick and you go to the hospital, 15 or 20 women can sit in a circle and send uh, Metta and Karuna and Mudita to you and you feel this happening. Now, I have felt things in the hospital. Lots of people were praying for me. I felt things in the evening for half hour or an hour where everything was different. I felt, how do I explain it? I'm on a tiny bed actually looked like I was losing weight, May too. <laughs> I looked like I was losing weight because I looked so tiny, but 
I was sit, lying on the bed, this tiny bed, and the bed felt like it would just go like this and it would hug me for like about a half hour in the evening. Three or four times this happened. And I crossed my mind, is it the drugs or what? Because they were giving me a lot of drugs at the time. But now that's all even out. And sometimes in the mornings, I get up very early here. It's easy for me to wake up right now at 4.30 or 5 and sit for an hour and then work for a couple hours. And when I do that, I feel this. I feel you warmth, like pressing. So what is this? Do we have to measure it? <laughs> Do I have to take a break and drive to the hospital and try to get some big equipment from a hospital measuring equipment to tell you what this is? Or can I just say, this is part of the human genome that's happening of our sensitivity and frequencies. We need to look, at, we definitely need to look to the Chinese. They're very good with this. They got 8,000 years of experience with yin and yang and the female energy, the male energy, the neutral energy. They understand in India, all the Ayurvedic components of dealing with the energies in the body to help heal you. Yeah. Are we supposed to ignore all that because it doesn't do modern science agreement? I remember uh, you had done meta circles in uh, Malaysia with the sister Obasa. You know that uh, in uh, Sri Lanka Buddhist temple, uh, we uh, had some retreats and you uh, right. did some meta circles and we did it in, uh, I think, uh, Chinsui also. Yes, so, uh, that is something uh, experience which, which we have done about uh, or they call it a uh, short uh, experiment with the circle of metta, and uh, they would kind right. of sit in a circle, and everybody would give a, a metta to one uh, a, one person to see That's if right. they can feel that. Uh, the meta. You, then again, you can put another person, and it, and it worked. And only a couple people didn't feel it. They didn't, but it's because they put up a, a mental block that it can't be or something. But they, but most people could feel this this warmth. They could feel the warmth moving, and so it's a matter of opening, a matter of stepping out of denial, and opening to possibilities. One of the one of the things that really always made my life interesting, and my dad pointed this out, is try everything, experiment with everything, investigate everything, and don't believe that things are impossible. Open yourself to possibilities. Don't shut yourself down and prepare your mind that this is impossible, because it will be, because these are frequencies because we're giving orders to our brain and it's cooperating. And if you're practicing TWIM, you are definitely learning the line of communication to send to yourself, to send to another, to send to other people, to send to other directions. We're teaching you targeting. And so you, you target yourself. So how can I help myself to extend out the harmony and frequency of my prayer, what happened to those nuns? The nuns moved from 30 minutes of prayer, personal prayer. They were being taught a little different, they, but it wasn't a Buddhist teaching. It was neutral, but they were being taught to extend the period of time they could sit absolutely still in personal prayer, connected with uh, communicating with God. This is what we were doing. And so they increased their times from 30 minutes to some as much as four and a half hours where they didn't move at all. And they were able to be watched and we were in the room checking them and they could sit as much as three and a half to four and a half hours, some of them. And most everybody there was able to increase the length of time they could work with prayer to at least two and a half to three hours, everybody. So they were really, really happy <laughs> that they could do this. And then people would ask them to pray for them and they would bring the prayers into this period of just thinking these prayers towards those people for these people. And so they were integrating the prayer. This is what we were doing and it was working. So, we broke it down. Only thing we had to do in order to work with them 
was spend what the first night ironing out the five precepts and the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and once we looked at the Ten Commandments closely and we looked at the at the at the precepts when we break down the precepts completely, we realized that there really wasn't any difference in in uh, what we were doing. Uh, that we were doing it for personal communication development with our inner selves, uh, and connecting our inner selves to our outer selves and, and becoming familiar with human frequencies. Now these human frequencies, are we testing them? What? If we look at neuro, uh, the neuroplasticity and we see how we can change ourselves and change other people, uh, then we're learning how to build new neural pathways in our brain. And we are actually now, these people like Huberman and uh, this other man, he said, the one man uh, that was working with Huberman, he said, so you can't fix the world and you're going to argue with me that you can't fix the world. He said, sit still in your chair for a minute right now. He said, look around you and see something in your own world, your own house, that's broken. And then he said, fix it. <laughs> that's all he said. He said, get up and fix it. <laughs> and it was like, you know, I left the glasses here in the kitchen when I read that. I had all the glasses were all over the stove. People had been here and I had this, tea for everybody and I hadn't cleaned up and I looked over and said yeah okay so I got up <laughs> just put everything in the dishwasher you know but I did something what his point was stop saying I can't do anything stop saying that my clock is operating this way but the world is operating that way and I can't do anything he's there get up off your butt and fix something <laughs> So he did. So that's the story. Prayer has power. It has as much power as you give it. It has as much result as you believe in it. You don't want to try to make it do it. You want to allow it to happen. That's the, that's the twin thing is the Buddhist thing is allow, allow, allow. We don't want to say abandon everything because we don't want you to feel abandoned. Relinquish it, let it go, let it be what it is and, and help it to just be born. And what is born, you can create. And you create your world. That's all I'm talking to you about. Okay? That's it. Are we done? Is that good enough for prayer? Anybody got a question? I think it's good enough. You want a positive uh, analytical answer for a, a hypothetical thing. <laughs> That's really, you know, it, it, it's in everybody's heart is a different, a different summation uh, for prayer. Everybody has a different direction. Hi, Doc. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. That's great. So we're, we're just talking about the power of prayer and power of change, and we should just get up and fix one thing at a time. <laughs> okay. Anybody have anything to say about prayer? Yeah? Okay. I lost, it um, looks like I lost you. I thought he was still here. I guess he took a break. <laughs> Swapna, how are you doing, so, Swapna? Uh, the last thing which we do is also uh, the prayer, uh, like uh, the sharing of merits, uh, like uh, the suffering ones be suffering free and the fear, uh, uh, fear struck, fearless free. So I mean, it is also a way of saying that uh, uh, the good wishes, it is also a kind of uh, metta which we are giving. Uh, That's right. Others. And uh, it's, a, it's also a way of saying that uh, let mm -hmm. everybody uh, kind of have uh, something which uh, we all seek. Uh, that is the reason uh, uh, Buddha's uh, blessing was Sukhi Hotu, that is be happy. Uh, he said that beings want to be happy. 
so that is the uh, kind of ultimate uh, blessing uh, that Buddha used to give. Uh, and That's the right. blessing was to have a Vigayu uh, Bhava, means that you have a long life. So long, right. uh, if you have life, you have more experiences, more wisdom, and you are able to kind of understand more about these things. So a prayer is uh, a way of uh, just uh, saying, uh, a, 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 a wishing a world you want to be, like have a creating a world you uh, want to envision and uh, residing. So that is a kind of a positive uh, energy which we are putting out. Uh, so we get uh, and we uh, get to live in that positive energy. <laughs> yeah. So this is a good time for us to close down. Okay. And if you have a topic you want to be talking about next week, you can certainly write me a note. You know, I'm Kanti Kema too at gmail.com just just write me a note or, or send a note to Bhante he's coordinating me more than I can thank him so much for helping the song I keep going with this because he's coordinating with me so I keep going and everybody has been very helpful and supportive for this and we keep working with this we want to go to I will probably move to Budapest at the end of this month maybe and I will be trying to build a center there that's what will happen uh, where we can be have a base for people to come to coach uh, learn to coach and learn to teach and have classes from there and everything will operate and I will also hopefully have uh, some monks visits to who, who want to uh, maybe train eventually we will have people training with Bhante uh, maybe in Sri Lanka in some capacity and we also have people uh, from Dhammasukha we are continuing the uh, temporary ordination program we started many years ago and uh, and people uh, will train better in that program because there will be some monks that will be helping with that from Toronto and from, from other parts of the United States, they will uh, probably come and help. And then, so things are opening, lots of things are happening. And um, we want to help to support our, our Indian group uh, with S SVT have been uh, coordinating and those retreats are beginning to happen in India the right way and teachers will grow there also. So I'm very happy with everything that's growing and let's fold our hands and say our prayer, okay? May suffering one be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas, mighty power share this merit of ours and may they long protect the boots of dispensation. And all his teachings spread. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Should I do it? Actually, you're right the right way. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> okay. bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hope I see you next time. Be bye. happy. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.